surprised to know that Lisa Harper is a, a Harley girl. She has a motorbike. Um, I think she's also killed a goat. I don't think she meant to. I'm not sure she got arrested, but I think they certainly were considering it. And she teaches the Bible. The only other thought in my head was this. I had um, read in my hiking magazine that if you live out west, west of the Mississippi River, and you come upon a wild animal in the woods, unless it's a bear, it behooves you to put your hands over your head and advance toward the wild animal, all the while speaking in deep guttural tones. And then that intimidates the wild animal. They think you're bigger and scarier. So I thought, you know, I'm just going to risk it. I'm going to try to intimidate him before he attacks me. And so I took a deep breath, and I jumped out from behind the tree, and I started running toward the naked man like this. Hey! Just as guttural as I could, and y'all, it worked. He jumped up, obviously terrified, and took off running in the opposite direction. Now, what was such a riot is when he jumped up, I noticed, of course, for the first time, he was actually wearing these very really small blue running shorts. Um, <laughs> it, you know those shorts that sometimes serious runners wear that are slit up the side? And if they sit down, the shorts will splay. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? I mean, y'all, I would put money on the fact that this guy was naked. He looked so naked from where I was standing. <laughs> I just saw this woman turn to, it looks like her mother, and go, I thought this was a Christian conference. <laughs> She's talking an awful lot about nudity. Stay with me, it gets spiritual. <laughs> My first impression was, this girl is whack, and I love her. I've been a Christian since I was a little girl. Even then, I knew that I needed God to clean up my messy heart. What I did not understand at five, or at 15, or at 25, or 35, I think I'm just now beginning to grapple with this, is that God didn't just send his son Jesus to deliver me from my sins. God sent Jesus because he delights in us. Did you know that she has a master's degree? I think that it is really dangerous to give anyone that hyper that much information. Now, I guess the details of your story are different than mine. I really hope you have not been a victim of sexual molestation. Although statistics say that about a third of us in this arena have been. I hope your parents stayed together and you grew up in a really loving, happy home. But I know that regardless of the details of your story, y'all have dragons too. Because this planet that we're plopped on, this is not a perfect place. This is not Eden. This is not the New Jerusalem. This is a broken world. Theologian Mick Jagger was right when he said, you can't get no satisfaction here. This is not a perfect place. Jesus talks a lot about the baggage and the burdens that we'll deal with throughout the Gospels. He talks about the fact that life is hard. God says he's close to the brokenhearted in Psalm 32, which I think implies the fact that sometimes we'll have broken hearts. In John 16, Jesus says it this way, in this world, you will have trouble. In other words, in this world, your heart will be missed at some level. In this world, you will probably be marginalized. In this world, if you are a female over 40, your metabolism will cruise to a crawl, forcing you to consider wearing compression undergarments. <laughs> this world. Y'all, this is an imperfect place, and sometimes it's tough. Sometimes the dragon roars. But here's the good news. In John 16, Jesus goes on to say, but take heart, but cheer up. I've overcome this world. In other words, yeah, y'all can clap for that one. In other words, our Savior is a world-class dragon slayer. Jesus took him down. Now, in Luke chapter 8, there's a passage that depicts Jesus as a dragon slayer that I've just begun to learn in the last couple of years, and I love this story. She's very deep. The well goes very, very deep. She loves the Lord. Um, she's very smart. She's bright. Now, y'all stop and think. Most of us would say that we believe God is sovereign, that he orders the details of the physical, tangible world that we see. So don't you think God ordered the fact that Mary... This marginalized woman was the very first person to witness the risen Messiah. God could have written somebody else as the hero of that story. It could have been a guy with a PhD. 
It could have been somebody who was significant in their culture. But instead, our creator, Redeemer, said, I'm going to choose her. This girl nobody else would have chosen as the hero. I'm gonna choose her for what is arguably the most important job in human history, to be the very first one to witness the risen Messiah. I'll choose Mary. Isn't that cool that God chose Mary from Magdala for that job? I love that about our God. I love that he takes people that most of us probably wouldn't think of as very significant, and he says, I'll write them in as the hero. Now, I want to take a teeny rabbit trail, but I think this is important. In light of what I've been talking about, y'all, I want to make it very clear that I am not a feminist, even though I don't wear hose. I am not a feminist. I don't want to burn my bra, and believe me, you don't want me to either. I love men. I would really like to have one of my own someday. And so this is not about feminism. As a matter of fact, what I'm talking about has very little to do with gender. It has everything to do with value. Whether or not you are male or female or black or white or yellow or striped, God looks at us, at his children, at his creation and says, that one's beautiful to me. She's significant to me. He never labels any of us as less than. Lisa can take Bible principles and um, that are sometimes lofty and repackage them into like Oreo cookie bags where people like me can get a hold of them. And I love that she puts the cookies right on the shelf where you can reach them. That's my favorite thing about Lisa Harper. I am free. For so many years, I did not access the freedom that Jesus promises us. I thought, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. That is a lie. And my guess is some of y'all are probably as crippled in your hearts as I was. And I hope you hear that lesson so loud tonight and tomorrow. You are free. You are not dirty. You are not ugly. You are not worthless. You are the beautiful, delighted in bride of Jesus Christ. I wanna give you two charges as I close tonight. The first one is this. Tell somebody safe your story. Tell somebody that you trust your story. In Revelation, it says the dragon is defeated by the word of our testimony. When you tell each other your stories, he goes down. So tell somebody, maybe even this weekend, your story. Find somebody safe to tell your story to. And then the second charge is this. When your inner dragon starts whispering ugly things, I want you to tell him to kiss your big, fat toe. And here's the biblical reason for that. Romans 8, verse 1. There is now, therefore, no, zero, zippo condemnation for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. No matter what has been done to you, no matter what you have done, you do not have to wear shame anymore. You are absolutely adored. Thank you all so much.